The title of my presentation is Art, the Road Not Taken. And, and as you know, my story is very different, my background from art. Um, so I'm going to go through and stop about halfway through. And then uh, if you have questions, just, you know, we'll answer them then. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end as well. So, so first of all, thanks for, for joining me. And um, I'll tell you, I've been painting six, about six years. And I don't present myself as an expert by any means, but I think I've been very fortunate that I found something that I'm so excited about and I just love doing. So this is one of my early paintings, the, the pathway. And I thought that kind of demonstrated my title. So, okay, next slide, please. So here's our outline for today. Um, I'll kind of go through discovering my interest skill building, how I went about, you know, trying to learn more about it. And then of course my entrepreneurship business side has to come out a little bit and, and talk about trying to, you know, take it a little further than just a hobby. Uh, so the business of art. And now I'm kind of at a point of where to from here. And uh, hi Donna, I see you joined us. And uh, so, you know, I, I'm kind of going through a reevaluation, so I'll share that with you. So, next slide, please. First of all, discovering my interest. My background in art is zero. I real, I truly had no art classes in my life. I liked to draw some as a child, um, but you know, in well, we had no art in high school, and in college. You know, my family was more business oriented and you had to think about getting out and getting a job. And so, you know, art didn't even cross my mind. So then later on, um, we were on a trip to Italy on, after I'd retired. And in those two years uh, in Italy, or two years, two weeks, I'm kind of looking at my notes, uh, I probably saw more art in in my whole life and um so what stood out one thing was our tour of the our tour of the Uffizi gallery uh, we had this wonderful tour guide and he was an art historian and he just made these artists come alive and I remember when I came home I bought the book the life of the artist which is written in like 15 hundred and something and, and the author knew these people so it was pretty fascinating and it wasn't um, too long after that um, that my mom had passed away and I wanted to get something to kind of commemorate her by and my mom every time she visits she'd buy me a little something for the house so I would I thought why don't I get something for the house and I decided I wanted to get a piece of art so I went online and I found a website called artoyster.com and they literally have artwork of hundreds and hundreds of the old masters. And you can look at it by title, you know, by artist. And I spent hours and hours and hours and I just got so enthralled with all the art. And I ended up um, buying, the, and this is a reproduction of a piece of art by Gustav Klimt. And he's the one that did the Golden Girl. Right. And they do these reproductions. And when I got it in the box and opened it, it's I could still smell the, the paint. And I never thought about painting myself, but it was just so neat to be able to smell this. So then uh, kind of moving along, I got a call from Jackie Snyder, my good friend. And Jackie, I don't know if you're on here. I know you were going to try to join us, but. Uh, yes, I'm here, Mary Beth. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So anyway, there was a, an art and wine class. That's where it all began um, in Parkville. But what was really neat about this class was uh, rather than having you, you know, look at something, everybody paint the same thing. She said, just cover your canvas and paint. And you started with a covered canvas because that kind of gave you a freedom. Uh, 
And then you made something out of it. And I ended up with an abstract piece that I still like. And um, so that kind of began our, um, you know, exploration of art. Okay, next slide, please. So I, I might say too, then after that, Jackie and I, um, she had a friend that worked in alcohol ink and she was kind of helping her learn how to use it. And one time Jackie called and said, do you want to come over and uh, let's paint some bases? And I came and another friend and we started painting with alcohol ink and it was like, that was just so much fun because it was, it's very, uh, uh, free. It, it, you don't have a lot of control with it. Um, and uh, so I started painting on the landing between my first floor and second floor in my house. And it is literally about six by six. And when I stand back to look at my work, I was afraid I was going to tumble down the steps, you know. So um, after spending about six months there, I talked my husband into letting me use his den and now I took over the den and that's my art studio. So, but one thing with the alcohol ink, it was lovely, but you couldn't control it. And I found I wanted to make things look more realistic. So that begins my next slide. It, uh, this one is my skill building slide. And my gosh, I feel like this will never, okay, we can go back to the previous one. Yeah, this one. I feel like skill building will never end. And truly there is so much to learn. But I started out with a JCCC non-credit course and I was able to uh, enroll in all space available as a professor emeritus. And so um, that was great. And uh, a gentleman named George uh, Moeller taught the course and he covered a couple of the basics that were just invaluable through everything. And that was how to do a grid and, you know, grid your photograph and grid your canvas. And that helped you with proportions. And then he taught us about value, the different dark and lightness of everything. And those two principles were just key. And then the next class I took through JCCC was, um, with uh, Connie Mo Moore and Connie, uh, she has a, a different approach. You know, she assumes people have the basics, and it's more a studio approach. And you, she walks around and gives you pointers, and and has some kind of informal classes too. But it's real, really more an open studio. But you you start making connections and friends and you get a little more into the art community and you know more what's going on. And so from that, and I took Connie's class several several semesters. I, I just re enroll and um, paint there every Tuesday or whatever. And so then I started taking some workshops and they offer them around town, like uh, the different galleries will have artists come in and do workshops and, um, I enrolled in a number of those, and one of them, uh, you can see the products of one of them. Uh, this was offered at the Eva Reynolds Gallery in uh, Prairie Life, uh, or Prairie Fire, Prairie Fire. And uh, the class was called Painting the Masters. And when you went in, you chose a painting, and the one I chose was the top one was a Monet. And, um, you were supposed to reproduce it in a half a day. <laughs> so that is my reproduction of his uh, painting titled Woman in the Parasol. And then in the afternoon, you chose a different artist. And down on the, the left-hand side of the screen was a Van Gogh painting I chose, or a photo. And then on the right is my reproduction. And I have to tell you, in comparing the two, getting ready for this presentation, it's like, oh, I can see why the masters are masters. I have a little more work to do when I see them side by side. And it's, it's the subtlety of his work. You know, the, there's just, there's just di a, obviously a difference. And, uh, but this is great because you learned about different strokes and 
uh, the color schemes they used. And again, I, it was kind of a fascinating way to learn a little bit more about painting. And, and then finally, um, just through the connections and one of the workshops uh, we were taking, um, I met someone that had painted at the Inner Urban Art Gallery. And the Inner Urban is located in Old Overland Park. And it's the old post office that's about a block behind uh, the main street there. And um, they have an open studio every Monday where artists just can come in. And I, I still, the word artist doesn't feel like it fits totally, but you know, I say artists come in and there's this open area and we all paint there. And around the outside, there are, uh, you can rent a studio space. And there are a number of artists around the outside that you know come and go and they'll come out and talk to us and give us tips and, and so on. So that's kind of where I am now. Every Monday, Jackie and I paint at Inner Urban. And um, you know, we can paint more often, but I to tell you the truth, you know, life gets busy and and that's kind of all I've been painting more recently. So, so why don't I stop at this point and just see if there are some questions? Mary Beth, do you have a favorite painter? Um, I really do like the work of that Gustav Klimt, who's that Austrian painter. What I've learned is I like impressionistic work and that's kind of more what I've tried to do. So, um, you know, there's, I'm not good with names. And so I can more identify work that I can, oh, this artist or that artist, other than obviously some of the, you know, the ones everybody knows, but uh, just the impressionistic art, I would say, it's my mm -hmm. favorite. Yep. And uh, I compliment you on your uh, duplication of uh, Van Gogh, it's very well done. Oh, you know what I found is um, I can draw better than I can paint. And drawing is kind of, for me, intuitive. And um, so where I struggle with is more, to me, the skill part would be the paint, the mixing, the strokes, the and all that. And it, it is kind of interesting, but, uh, and I've also learned that painting is much more left brain than you re than I realize. It's not just getting a canvas and putting paint on it. You know, there's a lot of left brain activity that goes into it. And maybe that's part of what appeals to me because I, you know, I've spent a lot of my time on business things and so on. Okay, any other questions? Okay, shall we go to the next one? Okay, so kind of switching gears a little bit, you know, like my background I said in business and entrepreneurship. Um, so the three questions I would ask my students when they were trying to come up with an idea for a business, and these questions, you can see them, what's easy for you, what's hard for others, because if it's hard for others or they don't want to do it, it may be a business opportunity for someone. And what do you love to do? And so I kind of felt, found that art fit this for me, you know, these, it did come a little easy part of it. And I, I guess it is difficult for a lot of people. And I do, the time just flies when I'm painting. So, um, so I've spent a lot of time now, you know, with, with art. Um, shall we do the next slide? I just want to share with you, uh, again, and kind of the steps you go through and, and you do this a little intuitively too, you know, the product development part, one of the difficult things is, is trying to figure out your style. What do you want to paint and what is, what's it going to look like? And especially if you go beyond any kind of hobby stage, like galleries and art shows, you're going to need a theme, you're going to need consistency and a, 
a certain uh, body of work, you know, a volume of work and so on. So uh, the product development stage kind of goes on for quite a while. I'm still kind of in that stage too. Um, and another question that came up to me was, is this the quality that anybody would even buy? So for that, I, I started entering some of these art gallery shows and they have uh, juried uh, art shows that a panel of experts or artists will review all the applications and decide which ones are uh, selected. So I entered a number of those and probably was included maybe half the time, um, but it was just a thrill, uh, especially at first to think that my work would even be included and that these artists had selected it. So that gave me a little bit of you know, affirmation that the quality was, was at least getting there. And then in terms of evidence of market acceptance, like, now that's a business term, but basically would anybody buy it? And I would tell my students this, a lot of people will tell you something's wonderful, it's a great idea. And you find this a lot with artwork too, you know, that uh, friends and family are very supportive, but is anybody gonna write a check for it? And that's kind of the ultimate litmus, litmus test. So, um, and gradually I started selling some of my art, not a, not a ton, but, um, and these are two examples of artwork on the right. The first one, my Aspens, that's been accepted in several art shows. So I feel like I, I get that affirmation. I've not sold it at an art show. And that might have to do with my pricing also, but for, you know, whatever reasons, I haven't sold it. And the, these shows are well attended by other artists, but I'm not sure they always attract the public that much either, but uh, they're still fun to participate in. Now, the bottom one, I did uh, sell that through Facebook. And, um, you know, I was, I was very pleased to do that. So, so uh, that kind of leads me to marketing. And early on, you know, my friends and family, like I said, are very supportive. And uh, many times they would want, you know, to buy it or, but I'm not gonna charge family much, obviously, or even dear friends. And, but so what I would do is I would make a print and I would give it to them at basically cost. And I found a very good a place to order prints online. It's called mpix, mpix.com. And uh, they're actually out of Kansas and they do wonderful prints and for photos for, for anything. So I found their qualities really good. And they'll do Giclée prints, which is a very high quality print that even some of the galleries will, will sell Giclée prints. So, um, so then Facebook, you know, again, you're reaching friends and family and maybe a little broader circle than that. And I have sold probably three paintings through Facebook. And so that was good that find that I had a wider audience. And with this, I was selling the originals because I could charge what I thought I felt you know, was legitimate and you know what I wanted for a piece. Um, in terms of a website, I do have a website. Um, a lot of times when you apply to a show, it would ask you if you had a website. And I just decided that, you know, for credibility, if nothing else, I would do a website. And I had a former student from my business plan class actually do it. And her business was website development. So that was kind of fun to work with her. Um, and I have found that the website, I don't know that I really sell through the website, but I do think it, it adds a little more credibility. Um, galleries, you know, that's always, that's an avenue a lot of artists strive for, but it's difficult to get into generally. And I don't know how, but I had some real beginner's luck, but I got into a gallery probably my third year. And the way, the way it happened, this is a local gallery that I really, really like their work. And I would just stop and visit and talk with 
the gallery manager and, you know, I hang out a little bit, go to some of their events. And one time I said, Tim, if I brought in a couple of my paintings, would you look at them and tell me what you think? And, and so I, I did. And when I brought him in, he said, well, what are you going to charge for this? And I said, well, I'll have to give it some thought. And he said, well, just leave them with me and call me and tell me what you're going to charge. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm in a gallery. And, um, and then we had an opening night and artist reception and I invited all my friends and that was great fun. And um, so, uh, you know, and I applied to just one or two other galleries since then and I haven't gotten in. And one of them is, yeah, you know, I love their work and they're probably, they would be years down the road for me. So, but I might still, you know, choose some galleries and approach it and see what, I, what they think. Art shows, I kind of mentioned that, um, you know, the galleries and the juried art shows, they have the Plantfield show, they have the Buttonwood has shows and, you know, again, a lot of my friends and I, we apply to those and they have like an opening reception and, and art fairs, that's, that's been interesting because, you know, I was just curious about all these art fairs we have. And, uh, but, you know, that's a whole investment in itself, the tent and the equipment and all that. And so finally, I did have a friend, a friend's husband who uh, would get in the Westport art fair regularly. And he told me about this category called emerging artists. And he said, you ought to apply because they will provide the tent, you know, and you can just put up your art and it's, you know, you don't have big investments. So I thought, well, I think I'll apply, just see if I get in. And then lo and behold, I got in and it was like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? And so I worked all summer getting ready for this art fair this last September. And just completed that, and I'll tell you about that, but uh, in just a minute. But and finally, pricing uh, again. That kind of goes with the whole thing of uh, where are you going to sell your pieces if you want to do like a you know the craft fairs and all that. It it needs to be at a much lower price. If you want the galleries, you're going to have to charge more. Or it's not worth a while. So so um, and then that leads me to the next slide. And that's just a couple pictures of some of my more recent paintings. And the one on left, the left, I sold to a woman uh, that's in Phoenix and she was here visiting and um, shipped it out there. And I was thrilled with that. And the one on the right, I just sold at the Westport Art Fair. Um, so, okay. And then the last slide is kind of where we're to from here. So I said reality checks. And I'll make this quick so we don't have so we have time for QA. But uh, after Westport, I really realized I'm not 50 years old. Um, I loved it, it was wonderful. But the day before I was to set up, my husband went into the hospital. He was going to be my helper, but not only that, you know, we, I was worried about him. Um, after being outside that Saturday at Westport, it was 93 the whole day. And by that evening, I was sick. I was dizzy. I was, you know, I think my electrolytes got off. And so Sunday, my daughter and I went down and took down my display. I said, I can't do it another day. And I know I have trouble with heat. So, you know, who, who thought it would be 93 degrees in September? But um, so the reality is, I'm not sure, I think we have to factor in that we're not as young as we used to be. And then the other thing, value clarifications is, is this how I want to spend my time anyway? Um, I love the painting, but the, mar the sales part of it, I'm pretty indifferent to that. I just, uh, you know, uh, would I rather be spending time with my grandkids and traveling and and you know all our options and and it's like so I'm kind of right there in terms of how much I'm going to dedicate to my art, but I'm going to keep painting. I know that. So okay, so Q and A. What can we? What questions or comments do you have?
Lori, are you there? Oh, I was on mute when I said I really like your stuff, Mary Beth. Thank you oh. for sharing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you for <laughs> Mary Beth, did I understand you to say that you do like pencil drawings or you like to sketch or what was that? Um, when I was young, I would draw with pencil. Yeah, I mean, I would kind of draw when I was like eight, 10 years old, a little bit, just on my own, you know, but uh, that was the extent of any interest in art. Mm -hmm. I, I guess where, I, where I'm going with that, Mary Beth, is have you ever thought of getting back into that and doing that? as well as the painting? Oh, you know what? Um, no, not really, but I did take a drawing class kind of in my uh, skill building stage because I thought I need to learn to draw you mm -hmm. know, before I learn to paint. And uh, although um, not all artists can draw that well, some of them truly are more on the painting side of it. And, and that's what I've been told by them. So, um, but no, I don't plan to pursue the drawing part that much. Okay, thank you. Mary Beth, I know yeah. you've uh, changed your medium. Start, you know, we started out with uh, the alcohol ink, but um, what, what are you doing now? And how, how has that changed your art uh, by, in terms of the medium that you're working with? Uh, well, now I'm using acrylics. I'm trying to move to acrylics just because uh, the smell, again, the smell of the oil. I loved it at first, and now, it, you know, it, you work with it all the time, and it's it's strong, and, and I think acrylic is probably actually healthier in some ways. But I do have to say, Jackie and I have kind of gone on this skill building stage together. I mean, uh, we've taken a number of classes, we paint together. Um, and it's been a lot of fun to share it and to have uh, kind of the, the support or encouragement and support. So, yes, that's been great. And her story's uh, just slightly different. So she might want to share that at some point, certainly. So, yeah. Very good. Any more questions for Mary Beth? How about, I'll ask Donna. Donna's got the artist background. So are you going to, well, you're very creative in other ways though. So are you gonna pursue art at all? Oh, wait a minute. You have to unmute yourself, Donna. You're on mute, mute Donna. No, I'm not, right? There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I, I, yes, I think about it a, a, a great deal and um, and yes, there is some art in my background, but I, I never felt that I was exceptional at it. And, um, you know, so there is that ongoing need, as you say, to continue to, to build those skills. And um, I know, you know, many of you know that, that my medium is more in the sewing category. And um, so, but there's so many different segments of you know of sewing and and my mom was a home ec teacher so I, I learned to sew when I was probably five but my passion has kind of moved now to um um to embroidery art in in sewing um but it it kind of leads me to Mary Beth you um it, your last slide you were talking about reality checks and and value clarifications and and where you are right now and you did say, we're, you know, that you knew that fairs weren't weren't going to be the thing, you know, wasn't the uh, the vehicle mm -hmm. you wanted to use. But um, at the same time, you said you still wanted to continue to paint. So my question is, do you ever worry about the inventory stacking up so much without <laughs> outlets for it? And you know, and so if so what are the alternatives? Is it build up the website more? Is it find more online outlets? Um, what do you do? Well, I think I will continue to post to Facebook and I do, uh, uh, you know, I have sold mm, probably at least three or three paintings through Facebook mm -hmm. and I sold them at, you know, a price that was adequate. It wasn't, you know, like giving it away to my friends and family. Um, so I'll do Facebook and I may come up with my list of, 
of galleries and approached some galleries. But, you know, I tell myself, okay, I, I play golf occasionally, but, and it's like, no one pays me to play golf. So it's truly a hobby and I don't have to make money at this. Um, so if I don't get paid to, pay, to paint, that's fine. But your question about inventory is true. I mean, it is stacking up and uh, my kids will inherit it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and what do they think about that? <laughs> you know, um, my kids, I, I don't know if you remember the picture of the boy uh, sitting on the ledge uh -huh. and that's my grandson. And that's a 36 by 36 that hangs in my grandson's room. Oh, wow. and. All my kids, grandkids have my paintings. And I just think it'll be kind of neat. Hopefully they won't throw them in the trash. It'll be like grandma painted this, you know, and, and that's kind of neat, so. That's fun. Um, actually, I wanted to ask Jackie something. And I was, I've been kind of thinking about them. Um, where are you now with your medium of choice? And I know the two of you kind of started with the alcohol ink, but is that still a place for you or, or what medium is your choice now? And then secondly, I know you've moved recently. And so do you, do you have a space in your home now for, do you have your own studio in your home? Donna, you've hit on some some issues I've been grappling with. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're tricky. But um, I've kind of gone through the same progression that Mary Beth has in terms of the alcohol ink was first. And then just starting to take a class uh, was mostly an oil. And so I probably did a couple of years of working with oil. And that, at that time, I had my own studio in my house you know, with a room that I could open a window and every, you know, it was, it was great. However, we have moved into tall grass. We are in a, a an apartment. Uh, it's, it's small, certainly compared to the house we had. So I have tried to incorporate a studio in the closet. Uh -oh. As you can imagine, that's less than ideal. Uh, and I have switched to acrylic, uh, partially as a result of, I didn't want the, the fumes and the uh, paint thinner and all that stuff to have to dispose of properly. And, uh, you know, you, acrylics, you can wash down the sink, but with oils, you really do have to, uh, have to be careful, careful of the fumes and the toxic waste from it. So um, I am doing acrylic, uh, going to the art house on Mondays uh, with Mary Beth and some other people that we've met now as a result of this and they're great artists so we learn a lot from them and that really helps. I'm also taking a class here at Tallgrass and they have a class uh, on Wednesdays and so I now have a container, a little roll around thing that is my studio and I can take it anywhere. So uh, I can spread out on the kitchen counter or I can go into my little cubby or I can go to these other places and paint. So it's really a matter of figuring out how to do it in a different situation. And uh, so not ideal, but it certainly works. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Okay. Well, it, what's our time frame, Lori? Are we, we should try and keep it to an hour. So you've got some time yet if you want. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Do you want to share some of your uh, paintings that are in your studio? Well, I tell you, I, I, this is difficult. I've learned when in Zoom, during Zoom, we painted with Zoom the whole time. And it was really interesting because you found that you really got to know people better because you could sit and paint, uh, you know, the whole time and, and talk, whereas if you're spread out in a studio, you're not talking as much. But anyway, one thing I learned, we would try to show each other our work. And it's like, you almost get dizzy trying to, uh, you know, move around and show your paintings, but let me give it a shot here. Hold on okay, this, <laughs> this is my picture. Or this is uh, kind of the plaza. 
but that was uh, my version of COVID on the plaza when no one was on the street. Um, then this is kind of, I'm moving a little bit toward the contemporary and actually I'm finding the contemporary cells. Um, I find the real abstracts more difficult like this one. This one, this is a print, this one sold like within one day when I put it on Facebook. So, you know, I thought maybe I should try to paint what I like and I actually like the abstracts more than the real realistic ones. But I find this more difficult than making things look like they look. <laughs> so my, my last one, the one I'm working on right now is this tree. And uh, so that's kind of a combination of realism, but you know, pretty simple or a little more abstract background. So good point, thanks for, I hope you could see those enough to get the idea, but uh, it's hard to put it on a Zoom call. Yeah, take it on the road. <laughs> take it on the road is difficult. Yes, yes. And I was trying to think if I'd actually left anything out and I don't, I think I kind of hit the key, key points I wanted to make. Like I said, I feel fortunate because I've had so many people say, oh, I wish I could find something that I was really excited about, you know? Uh, so it's, it's kind of filled a niche in my life. That's awesome. And Jackie, are you selling any of your paintings or moving into that? Uh, I have, uh, I have sold some things uh, kind of in totally different ways. Uh, I'm not nearly as conscientious as Mary Beth is. And so I'm kind of, I haven't really developed a website or anything like that, but I have accidentally sold some things. When I lived in Parkville, uh, I put a lot of my alcohol inks in a, in a frame shop there. And I oh. probably sold eight or nine, uh, 10 of those in a frame shop. And then uh, I did one, one an art fair where I sold quite a few. Uh, what I've been doing lately is I paint something and I put it outside my door here at the apartment building. And so people now come by and look to see what I'm doing. And I've sold, I've sold two that way. Uh, and one was a commission. Somebody saw what I was doing and you know, they said, I want like, I want one of these, but I want it like this. And so oh, yeah, nice. I've sold a, I've sold a few things. Um, and uh, you know, I I'd like to sell some things, but like Mary Beth, if I don't sell them, then uh, now uh, they will fill up the apartment very quickly. So I'm gonna have to find a, an outlet for them. <laughs> oh, I also have some things in uh, there is a store, a uh, little shop in um, on Santa Fe there in downtown Old Overland Park. It's called Unique Finds. And uh, I have some of my work in there and um, I've sold a couple of them in that shop. And I'll probably continue to, you know, he wants some more things. So I'll take some things down there to him. I'm doing more, more abstracts right now and uh, like Mary Beth said, those seem to sell. People like a, a piece of color, you know, to right. decorate. And since since some of my background was in interior design, I tend to paint things that that you could decorate with. I'm not sure that's art, but it's color. Oh, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's some type of art, but it's yeah. the eye of the beholder. That's art. right. Yeah, but it it's just been fun. Mm -hmm. Let me. This is Anita, um, and I, I I'm just fascinated by the comments, especially that Jackie and Donna are making, as well as Mary Beth. Let me uh, turn the camera on you, uh, Lori. Uh, you have some artistic inclinations. Could you explain anything that you do? I I think you do a lot of different crafts, like. Well, we, I, I do craft kind of things and folk art painting. I was telling Mary Beth before others joined in that years ago I did folk art painting and then we started moving into oils and then my kids got busy and hence I got busy and went away from the painting. 
So now we, I mean, I, I might do a craft here and there with my grandkids or with some neighbors, that type of thing. But um, I do enjoy making things. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's, I think maybe when people look for a hobby, sometimes I think we all tend to look maybe a little more directly at it. But if I look back, I've always loved the creative aspects of my work. And, and at JCCC, I loved writing curriculum. Uh, I wrote, you know, I, I had a, like two books that I wrote. Um, and I would just lose myself in the writing at that point. Um, so I've had that creative side, you know, so maybe it's not quite as big a surprise because art feeds into the creative side and, the, and uh, you know, but I would have never looked to art directly unless I hadn't kind of stumbled into it. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. There's clues along our background, you know, so like Lori, I was telling her earlier that in our art class, oh, almost everyone there says, oh, I used to do art, but you know, the family, I got busy with this and that. And you know, so um, a lot of people are getting back to it. And I think that's nice to know because I've looked at some of those art classes like at the college and thinking, ooh, could I do that? You know, you I don't could. know if I'd be good enough to, you know, that kind of, you know, hedging on my part. So that's good to know. Um, Oh, you really, I mean, uh, yeah, people come in and it's a little intimidating at first and then it's not because everyone's kind of starting at different points and right. very That's good to know. Okay, maybe I'll take that leap. <laughs> Mary Beth, could I ask you to comment further on the statement that art um, painting is a lot more left brain than you originally thought? Well, I just think uh, my image of art was it all kind of, the artists, it just, they emoted, you know, they just, and some of them do probably, but like the first class, it was how to do a grid and, mm -hmm. and about different love value intensities and all that. And then you come to find out that, you know, a lot of our even famous artists, Thomas, art bitten and you know I mean they have sketches and they it's a very layered approach to getting to the finished product mm -hmm. um, now abstract is different and that's probably why I have a little more difficulty with it is because you know you don't have a little bit of the structure to get you started mm -hmm. good thank you you know, a lot of people in my computer, the computer field and all, are very artistic, are artists, you know. Uh, the backgrounds of our, some of the people we paint with Jackie, you know. Um, one's a statistician, was a statistician. And she's a very good artist. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of expand a little bit and see what actually both you and Jackie thought about, you know, as a, as a group, what can we do to um, to help to create a bit more of a sharing environment here? And part of what I'm thinking is, Mary Beth, at one point, I remember um, you had asked for, suggested, and I don't know if you did that with me personally or you know through Facebook or, or whatever, but photos that were interesting, landscaping photos that were interesting to you. Um, and I wonder if, if um, abstract things that are interesting to some of us, if we just sent it to you, um, would be of any assistance. And in the other direction, I was kind of thinking had to do with uh, you know this accumulation of inventory that that both you and Jackie are discussing. And and what are the outlets that each of us might run into that could be possible outlets for um, for our work. I, I jotted down that Jackie said unique finds on, on Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. um, to address your last question, I think, um, you know, I would have to look at my pricing and because uh, being in a gallery early, I had an influence that, you know, I had to price this at a certain level or I wasn't 
the gallery wasn't going to be interested in showing my work. But if I'm going to try to put it in some other, like more of the, the little shops and all, I'm going to have to adjust my pricing. And since I don't really care if I sell, I haven't done that. But uh, so, and what was your first question about how to help each other? Oh, that's been a thrill for me that my friends will go on vacation sometimes and they'll come back and go, oh, I took the neatest picture for you to paint. Oh. <laughs> One of my for you to paint. But I found that when I started painting, I looked at things differently. I saw things that I would never see and the detail. And I think some of my, the people I know are doing the same thing because they're looking at it as a potential painting. Now, have I painted all this? No, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, it's just nice that they're buying into it, you know, too. So that's my answer, Jackie. I don't know if you could add to that. And... Oh, you're, oh, you're, muted. you're muted. Here we go. There you go. One of the things that it, it struggle artists, many artists, including especially me, struggle with is what am I going to paint next? I mean, where do the ideas originate? How do you come up with, you know, some of the images that, that you paint? So having other people send pictures that they've taken or images that they see, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'd like to say everything I do is totally original and some of it is mostly by accident, but um, you know, I you want inspiration. And I think that's what, you know, in terms of sharing, uh, you know, I, I'd be interested in seeing Lori's work or seeing your work or anyone else around uh, the group who have who've delved into some things because that inspires you. Being around people who are artistic inspires you to try new things and to, to branch out. So that would be one answer. Yes, I'd love to have uh, fresh ideas and, and photographs that you've taken. Yeah. Um, go ahead. No, and I, I really kind of emphasize that it is so great to like paint in a group and all. Um, painting's a solitary experience and and you get a lot of encouragement and ideas and and tips from other painting, painters. So like taking a non-credit class or us going to inner urban, I mean, we could paint here, but there's just something and you learn a lot through your peers. So mm -hmm. I'd encourage if you kind of get involved, that feeds your interest. And we've talked and Anita, Anita this is Anita's suggestion and we haven't had it, it come to life yet, partly because of COVID. Um, is that we have, it's kind of two prong uh, a gathering where our retirees can show, whether it be their paintings, their photographs, their craft projects or quilting, you know, we, there's so many of our retirees that, that are creative and have so many different ideas and, and products that they've made that we would have a craft show of, or art show of some sort. And then the other part of that would be is maybe to, if, if people would donate pieces to sell towards our scholarship fund. That was the second part of that. But that would be a way for all of us to share some of the things that we've been doing, whether before, after, during retirement. Um, we had one gentleman and I don't, he was welding these beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was really unique, but there's so, I mean, I, I know, I know there's others out there that are doing, you know, Dick Stein's a photographer and has some beautiful photos. There's lots mm -hmm. of different things we could share amongst each other. I think that's a great idea. So uh, we're, ho I mean, I'm hoping, you know, the, that we can get back to life here soon mm -hmm. and that we can do something in person like that, that we, where we can come in and share it. Yes, I know Donna has things to share too. She has a lot of, of product building up probably. So yes, and many people probably do really. And so. yeah. they can contribute to. Yeah. How many quilts do you have now, Donna? Well, quilts, I probably have um, 
I've probably made 80 or 90. Um, I have maybe 30 of those right now. Um, the decorative towels, I probably have uh, 200 of those right now. Oh my. And, and Lois probably has a stockpile too, don't you? I know you're there. I can see your eyes. Yeah. Yes. I had to unmute myself. I just learned to quilt after I retired, which has been about 10 years ago. And I'm not the best, but I love what I do. No, and that's do. all that matters to me. You do beautiful work, Lois. <laughs> and I mean, like somebody else said, though, I don't know what my kids are going to do with them when I'm gone. And I think they're probably just going to put them in a rummage pile and say, here, take whatever you want. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there, neither one of them are very impressed. So, you know. Well, what am I going to do? <laughs> Maybe they'll change in another 20, 30 years. Your grand, yeah. The grandkids are probably going to be more interested than our kids. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, wonderful presents that we received when we retired from the business division was that Donna would make us all aprons. And I proudly have mine displayed in my kitchen. I never use it because it's so beautiful, but she has wow. amazing seamstress talents that she shares with all of us. Very nice. Let's see, so that would be a fun thing. There are so many things that I, you know, I'm excited to see what everybody does because I know there's things out there that people are doing that we don't even know about. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do we have any more questions for Mary Beth or Jackie or anybody? <laughs> Incredibly well done. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Mary Beth. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for tuning in.